A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high-o silver, the Lone Ranger. When the days of the open range passed, there were many disputes over boundaries and water rights among the cattlemen. In some cases, feuds developed, which were carried on from generation to generation. And one of the greatest obstacles that faced the masked rider of the plains in his fight for peace and security was this enmity and misunderstanding between the honest ranchers. In the end, however, he made them realize that they must all work together if the new country was to progress. It was he, more than any other man, who made the winning of the West possible. Return with us now, those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for the range country. Hi, Silver. Away. Young Bill Tyler, who had been at school in the East for several years, suddenly determined to return to his father's ranch. No sooner was his mind made up than he began the long journey. When at last the stage halted on the trail in front of his home, he ran across the yard and hurried eagerly up the steps of the porch he had known so well as a boy. Uh, why can't you let a fella get his nap in? I... Why, the great horn toad. Pa. Son. Oh, gosh. Where, where? You're surprised to see me? Say, get in here. Give me those bag of yours. Why couldn't you let your old dad know you was coming? What'd you knock for? Why didn't you just <laughs> whoa, come right... Whoa, whoa, there. How many questions at a time do you think I can answer? I ain't never been so glad to see anybody in all my born <laughs> days. Here, here. Uh, hand me them bags. I've got them. Then get in here. Now, now, and let, let me have a look at you. Golly, your <laughs> name's torn your paw. Say, you grow to be the bigger man than I ever figured on. And, Dad, you're not a day older than when I saw you last. <laughs> I'm holding my own. Uh, sit down, sit down. Uh, hey, golly, I... Uh, hold on now. Wait a minute, young fella. I just happen to think. Ain't you supposed to be in school? Ain't no vacations uh, this time of year that I know about. Uh, hey, you, you wasn't thrown out, was you? <laughs> of course not, Dad. Just got fed up on school, that's all. So, <laughs> just up and quit, huh? That's right. Kicking over the traces already. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I ought to make you turn right around and get right on back. Oh, no, you don't. I'm here, and I'm here to stay. You sure you didn't get into trouble of some kind back east there? No, Dad, i give you my word. The only thing happened was that I suddenly found out something that it took me almost six years to learn. Yeah, what, what was that? That this is where I belong. I used to think that I wanted to make a place for myself in the east, Dad. But not anymore. This is the place for me, right where I can work alongside you. Well, you ain't finished college yet. I've learned I... more than is good for me already. Oh, gosh, I, I don't know just what to say. <laughs> and say what you're thinking, Dad. That you're glad I'm back and that you never wanted me to stay in the East anyhow. Blessed it. That's just what I was thinking. <laughs> gosh, I, 
I'm so doggone glad to see you back. I, 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 I just can't find words for it. You haven't any notion how good it feels to be back. And I'll tell you something else. I'm not going to be satisfied until I'm sitting in a saddle and in the swing of things again. Well, then you came at a good time. Yeah? Something up? How would you like to go along to Central City with a trail herd? I'd like it fine. I... Wait. Did you say you're sending a trail herd to Central City? Yeah, there I am. Boys are just finishing up the roundup now. Oh. Uh, well, what's the matter? Well, look here, Dad. Do you have to send that herd there? Do you need the money? Or... Or is there some other reason? Hmm, might be. Why? Oh, oh, nothing exactly. It was just that I got talking with someone on the stage before we got to Richfield. Uh, out with it, son. You got something or other on your mind. Might as well tell me what it is. She... She said her grandfather was sending a herd to Central City. She spoke as though... Well, as though it meant quite a lot to them making that sale. Uh, who, who was you talking to? You can guess. Uh, Mary Wilson, by all that's holy... You know who she was? Not at first. Then I suppose you up and introduced yourself and you got real chummy. No. When when I found out who she was, I didn't tell her my name. I was afraid... Go on. Afraid of what? <laughs> well, if you must have it, Dad, I was afraid it might make a difference to her. I liked her. I, I wanted her to like me before she learned my name. You you can sit there and tell me that? Why not? Nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be ashamed of? Son, the last word your grandpa said before he died was... To drive them Wilsons off the range. I have remembered them words ever since. It's took a long time, but now I've got them just where I want them. I'm going to get my herd to Central City first, make the sale, and then watch the sheriff take over the Wilson place. Oh, Dad, I thought that old feud had died out. Never as long as I live. But, but it's silly. Making war on an old man and a young girl's not fair. They're Wilsons. It ain't my fault what else they are. There's range enough for both outfits. Like blazes, there is. But I talked to Mary. She told me what they're up against. They're short-handed. They've had a dozen things go wrong. If they make this sale, they can get back on their feet again. If they lose out, well, they're done for. They'll have to give up their spread. And they're going to lose out. Oh, Dad, you can't do this. Are you a Wilson or a Tyler? I'm a Tyler. And I'm as proud of the name as you are. Just proud enough so that I'd be ashamed to think we'd taken advantage of someone else's bad fortune. Bad words. Nothing but words. I can tell you what's wrong with you, and I won't have to make a speech about it, neither. Well? You've gone sweet on that Mary Wilson. Oh, I said I liked her. I never thought I'd live to hear a son of mine say a thing like that. Dad, I've met lots of girls. I've met girls in the East that came from fine families and had all the education they could be given. And I'll tell you right now that in just a few hours I talked with Mary, she struck me as the finest girl I'd ever met. You've talked to her for the last time. No. Oh, now, look here, Dad, let's be reasonable about this. I don't want to lose my temper any more than you do. But this feeling there's been between the two families, well, it's childish. There's no other name for it. Can't you see that as plainly as I do? Instead of being enemies, why not let's try to be friends? I think you'd better go back east. Ted, you don't know what you're saying. I know that a Tyler, and my own son, is talking like a traitor to his own kin. That's enough for me. When the next stage heads by here going east, you'll be on it. Very well. And you'll stay there till you've written me you got some sense in your head. I'm leaving, Dad, but I'm not going east. Look here. I'm going to stay right in this country, and I'm going to see that the Wilson herd reaches Central City before yours. Son, Bill, wait. Bill! Come here, Bill. Tyler, going to work for the Wilsons. Bill, leaving his father's home with nothing more than the clothes he wore and the few dollars he carried in his pocket, started down the trail to nearby Richfield afoot. On the way, however, he met a tall masked man accompanied by an Indian who offered him a lift. As they rode, Bill answered the masked man's questions reluctantly. And when they reached the outskirts of town, Bill left and went on alone. Him not tell truth. Did you decide that, Tonto? What made you think he wasn't? The way him talk. Would you say he was a crook? Well, me not know. Him look like good feller. I wonder what his game is. Uh, what you think? You decided he wasn't telling the truth from the way he talked. I know he wasn't. You, how you know? That's Jeff Tyler's son. Oh. He's been east for a number of years, but the family resemblance is there. 
You might not see it unless you were looking for it, but it can be seen. Mm, that heap strange. It is strange. You've heard of the feud between the Tylers and Wilsons, haven't you? Uh-huh. It's never come to actual gunfighting. Both sides, however, have done everything else to drive each other off the range. Tonto hear about that. And now old Zeke Wilson is rounding up a herd to send to Central City. His ranch depends upon his making the sale. Oh. Jeff Tyler is sending another herd. He thinks he sees the chance to break the Wilsons once and for all. Him, bad feller? No, Tonto. At least I'd always heard he wasn't. Just stubborn is all. But now... What do you think? Now, Kimasabi, I'm wondering if the things we've heard are wrong. Jeff's son is looking for employment with his father's enemies. I'm wondering if it isn't possible that Jeff has sent the boy there. Maybe that's right. Bill could delay the Wilson herd and help his father oh, win. Oh, that'd be he bad. The Wilsons never had anything to do with the Tylers, and so there'd be little reason for them to recognize Bill, especially since he's been east almost since boyhood. Oh. And that may be just what Jeff is taking advantage of. Mm, what we do? Tato, tonight we'll make camp near the Wilson place. We're going to watch developments. That be heap good. Let's go. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Come on. After Bill had purchased range clothes, a horse, and a saddle, he was virtually penniless. Leaving Richfield, he sent his mount toward the Wilson Ranch, arriving there shortly after dusk. He dismounted in the rear of the house, where he was approached by a limping, battle-scarred veteran of the cattle country and... Evening, mister. Looking for somebody? You. You're not Mr. Wilson, are you? Me? <laughs> nope, I ain't him. Me, I'm Horseface Collins. Horseface? <laughs> That's the hand we're all us answers to. The boys call me that on account I ain't so pretty or something. I see. Well, Horseface, I'm looking for work. Yeah? Well, you'll have to see the boss about that. He's in the house? Uh huh. Come on, I'll introduce you. What did you say your name was? I didn't say, but it's Bill Jones. No relation to old Pete Jones that used to swamp out the cafe in town, are you? No, why? Uh, I don't know. Just thought I'd seen somebody that looked like you for that's all. I see. Well, come along. Are you a cowhead? I think so. Hey, don't talk like one. You talk more like an eastern dude. Perhaps. Now, what in tarnation is keeping them? They vet all right. I know that for... Oh, howdy, Miss Mary. Here's a young fella allows us how he wants a job. Yeah, but what... Good evening, Miss Wilson. Well, this is a surprise. Say, you folks met up before? Why, why, yes, we... Horse face is right, Miss Wilson. I am looking for work. What am I thinking of keeping you standing here? Come in. Thanks. Grandpa! What is it, honey? Here's someone looking for work. Bring him along. Won't you come this way? Surely. Close the door, horse face. Uh-huh. This is him, Grandpa. Uh, looking for work, you say, young man? I am, Mr. Wilson. Sorry, but I'm afraid you're wasting your time. But, well, I heard you needed men. They told me in town you wanted a trail boss. Sure I want one. Want a half a dozen other hands besides. But I don't know where I'd get cash to pay him. No, young feller, I'm afraid they ain't nothing doing. But I'm not asking much. Young feller, I couldn't pay you two bits. You could after your herd is sold, couldn't you? I reckon so. But I'm beginning to think it ain't going to be sold. Not with that polecat of a Tyler racing me to market, it ain't likely. Doggone him. Listen, I'll make a bargain with you. Huh? A bargain? Make me trail boss and I'll get your herd to Central City before Tyler's herd. Or I work for nothing. Mm. Please, Grandpa, that's fair enough. Why don't you give him a chance? What are you so interested for, honey? I, uh, we met today on the stage. You were the young fellow Mary was telling me about? Well, I don't know what she said. I suppose so. Thought she said you had folks in the district. What are you doing here? I thought I had, but found I hadn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Folks did? Something like that. Uh, How do I know you can do the work? Trail boss got to have a lot of savvy, young fella. The herd won't be ready to start for several days yet, will it? You should be able to make up your mind about me before then. Please give him a chance, Grandpa. Mm. There's another thing. You ain't friendly with Jeff Tyler, are you? I'm not. Why? Because I won't have a fella friendly to that polecat working for me. I want that understood now, so there won't be no argument about it later on. Then I've got the job? If you prove, you can handle it. Can't hardly afford to turn down the proposition you offered. Fine. I'll bet you will be Tyler's hurt. You're darn right I will. Bill Jones. 
Joan. What's the matter, Horseface? Miss Mary, I've seen someone looks like this young fella Summers, and it's driving me loco place on him. Oh, The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. Young Tyler, assuming the name of Bill Jones, hired out to old Zeke Wilson, his father's worst enemy, as trail boss. It did not take Bill long to prove that, although absent from the West for a number of years, he could handle his new duties. At length, the day came when Wilson's herd was ready for the drive to market. Bill, waiting for old Zeke to arrive with his final orders, sat his horse to one side of the herd. Mary, Zeke's granddaughter, was with him and... I'm wishing you all the luck in the world, Bill. Thanks, Mary. I mean, Miss Mary. Uh, I'll call you Bill, and, and you call me Mary. Agreed? You bet, if you want it that way. Good. Which trail are you taking to Central City, Bill? Going by where the bottoms or around Crystal Lake? Can you keep a secret? Of course. I haven't said anything to your grandfather because I was afraid he'd question my judgment. But I'm not taking the herd over either trail. But, Bill, what other way is there? We're going through the hills. We'll cut off a week's journey that way. But you can't. No one's ever taken cattle that way. I can. But how... Look, Mary, Tyler's herd started two days ago. They've not only got that much start on us, but a full crew besides. If we're to reach Central City first, we've got to gamble. I, I just don't understand. Mary, when I was a youngster, I covered every foot of those hills. I know them as well as any man alive. And I tell you, cattle can be taken through them. Will you trust me, Mary? Will you believe I'm doing what I think best? Why haven't you told Grandpa about this? Well, you know what he'd say. Just what you did at first, that it couldn't be done. He knows this range, Bill. Oh, it's not the same thing. Mary, you said you'd keep my secret. I know. Then promise me you'll say nothing to your grandfather. Promise me. Well... I'm just doing this for him and you. If I thought I'd fail, I'd never attempt it. If Grandpa knew what you planned, he He'd would... give orders against it. This way he thinks I'll take the herd over one of the regular trails. I don't want to leave here tied down by any direct order. I do believe in you, Bill. And... And I will keep your secret. Good girl. Bill, I'll pray for you to win every minute of the day. Get up there. Get up. Come on, get those cows moving, boys. We're off to Central City. Bill gave no hint of his plans to the crew working with him during the week that followed. It was not until the herd reached the point where the two regular trails branched out that he told them what was in his mind. Look at here, Bill. You're a boss and all, but I'm telling you there ain't nothing ahead but blind canyons and general trouble. We not only can't get through, but after you find it out, we're likely to lose half the herd trying to bring them back again. I'll take the responsibility for that. Get the herd started. That's an order. Well, if you put it like that... Now, wait a second, fellas. Who's that riding this way? Someone coming here? You see him? I sure laying leather to them nags you're riding. Coming from the direction of the home ranch. By golly, one of them's a girl. Mary. And doggone if it ain't. That's the boss right beside her. The old horse face trailing behind. I thought that old geezer was getting too old and crippled up to ride a cayuse along like that. But what are they doing here? We'll be finding out soon enough. Wait, hold on, wait for us. What's the trouble, Mr. Wilson? Oh, 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 oh. You blasted lion devil crossing snake, I'll show you. Mary, what is it? I think you can guess. But I can't. I know you. Knowed you all the time, dog blasted. Only I couldn't place you. Calling yourself Bill Jones. I figured there was something funny about that handle. You were Bill Tyler. What? what? Jeff That's Tyler's the, kid? The same. But wait. Then that explains it, boss. That's why I aimed to have us drive the cattle into the hills. He's done what? That's right, boss. He was giving us orders just as you showed up. He said we wasn't following the regular trails. We was to drive straight ahead and cut through the hills. It was a scheme. It wasn't. Young fella, but... don't you deny it. You're Bill Taylor, aren't you? Well, yes, but... Then pack your things and get. I'm taking charge myself. Well, at least let me show you the trail I had in you mind. You can't show us nothing. Get! Before you get drilled like you deserve. All right. I'll go. Mary, before I go, I want to tell you for the last time that I've done nothing that wasn't for your good. 
I can say that on my word of honor. I don't suppose one more falsehood would matter to you. You've had a lot of practice lately. Mary. I'm sure there's nothing more to be said. I'd advise you to do as Grandpa told you. Pack and go. Faced with no alternative, Bill Tyler strapped his bedroll to his saddle, mounted and rode away. He headed back toward Richfield. When suddenly, from a gully beside the trail, he was confronted with a masked man in Tonto. Rain up, Bill. What? The masked man. Oh, 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 oh. I see they've discovered your identity. How, how did you know? Tonto was behind the chuck wagon when you were fired. I was afraid this would happen sooner or later. Then... Then you knew who I was? I recognized you that day I gave you a ride to town. And I suppose you think I'm a cheat just like Zeke and, and Mary do. I don't. Would you like an opportunity to prove you really were trying to help them? Stranger, I'd like nothing more in the world, but... Well, I guess that's thinking of the impossible. It can be proved if you're not afraid. It can? It can, and Tonto and I'll help you. Ride with us to camp, and I'll tell you how it can be done. And and I'll be able to prove it to... To marry, too? You will. Then lead the way, friend. If that can be done, I'll take any risk you want to name. Come on, Phil. Get up, get up. Oh. That night when the Wilson herd had been bedded down again after a hard day on the trail, Mary and her grandfather sat around the campfire of their own at some distance from the crew. Old Zeke, who had been attempting to cheer his granddaughter, finally gave up the attempt and settled himself to a gloomy silence. Abruptly, however, Mary raised her head. What was that, Grandpa? Huh? What is what? Uh, I thought I heard something just then. Oh, most likely just one of the boys gone after more firewood. It was quite close. You've been fidgety ever since you found out about that sneaking Tyler whelp. He wasn't gone on him, was you? Please, Grandpa, let's not talk about him. There, I'm sure I heard something that time. You did. What the... Mary! Don't cry out. There are three of us here. Call for your men, and you'll just be asking for trouble. Three of you? Oh, Bill. Yes, it's me, Mary. And a redskin with you. Th- then you are a crook. This proves it. Thrown in with a masked man and an Indian. Keep your voice down. You... Zeke, you and Mary are going with Tonto. Bill and I are taking over. So swiftly did the masked man and his companions work that they were finished before the trail crew knew of their presence. Mary and Zeke were bound and placed on their horses. This done, the Lone Ranger and Bill confronted the cowboys with drawn guns. Up with your hands, all of you! Masked man! Bill, take the guns while I keep them covered. See that every man is disarmed. Right. What's the meaning of this? This means that from now on, Bill and I will be the only armed men in this crew. And you're taking our orders. In the meantime, carrying out his part of the masked man's plan, Tonto brought old Zeke and Mary back to their home under guard. The ranch was deserted. The entire crew was with the trail herd. And in the days that followed, neither Mary nor Zeke could find a way to evade Tonto's vigilance. It was more than a week later in the Wilson living room that Mary and Zeke heard a horse stopping in front of the house and... Grandpa, someone just rode up. Well, Injun, do we still have to pretend there ain't nobody home? Doggone, I've sat here with my mouth shut when folks come to the door just about long enough. That Jeff Tyler right up. Him all right. Jeff Tyler? Of all the blasted nerve after what him and the kid of his schemed up. You let him in. I'll let him in. I'll tell him peace of my mind at the same time. So you're to home, you lying old maverick. I don't care if you have got one foot in the grave, you stove in old catamount. I'm going to make you eat the things you said about me and my boy. I'm... How dare you talk to my grandfather God, like that? You let me handle this, Mary. Blast you, Jeff, Tyler. Whatever I said about you ain't half bad enough. You're the lowest sidewinder that ever crawled out from under a rock. You're not Shut it up! You... Do you... What do you mean by saying that I sent Bill here, that your herd never reached Central City? By thunder, I'm here to tell you I don't have to try tricks like that to get the best of a half pint critter like you. I... If you didn't put Bill up to it, How'd you find out? One of your trail crew ran away and just got to town. He's spreading the story all over. Well, you did send that kid of yours here to hire out, didn't you? They did no such thing. But then how'd you find out? We had a fight, all on account of you. Me? Yes, you. He met up with you on the stage and fell for you. Started talking foolishness about me wanting to let up on you and Zeke here. Ended up by walking out on me. On me. His own pa. 
Then you folks got the crust to say it was just a trick. Zeke, if you was ten years younger, I'd give you the thrashing you got coming to you. What you mean is if you was ten years younger. But if you think you ain't too feeble, just come ahead. Grandpa, Mr. Tyler, please. Hey, what's going on here? Bill. Ask me. There's the line, young whippersnapper. Now we get to the bottom of this. I'll First tell you... First, Zeke, you'd better look at this check. Huh? Check? Take it. It's made out to you. If you look closely enough, I think you'll find it signed by the cattle buyer at Central City. But where... Why, the great horn spoon. Bill, did you get this bomber's cattle to market ahead of mine? That's just what I did, Dad. What in Tunky are you working for him for? Come on back home where you belong and take a job with some real pay in it. I might. It depends on you. Huh? Depends on me. Don't you want to work for your own pa? I do, and I will. But not before you and Mr. Wilson agree to forget about your fighting. You've enjoyed it long enough. Let the rest of us have our way for a change. Bill, then, then you weren't working against us. You, you got Grandpa's cattle to the market first, after all. Mary, I'm not blaming you for what you thought. It was natural, I guess. The only thing is, if I'd told you who I was right at first, you'd have had me thrown off the place. I, I don't know what to say. How to let you know how sorry I am. And... Just don't mention it again. Zeke, I think Tyler's come to the point where he's willing to drop the feud. What do you say? Oh, gosh, I don't know. After what his boy did, selling that beef for me, he I... He saved your ranch. That means something, doesn't it? Grandpa, you shake hands with Mr. Tyler right now. Mm, well, if you say so, honey... I do. You... you willing, Jeff? I ain't got no choice, have I? I want my boy back on the place. You heard what he said... He wasn't coming less than we quit fighting. So I reckon that's how it's got to be. I, uh, uh, shake, Zeke. You bet. And, and I was so sure, after that night on the range when you held us up, that everything was spoiled. That's the only way there was to fix things, Mary. It was the masked man's idea, not mine. He knew if we took over that herd and made the crew do just as we told them, that you'd be able to see for yourselves that I'd been honest with you. The masked man and the Indian, where are they? Oh, yeah. Bill, they're leaving. Go after them. Get them back. No use in trying that, honey. He's on his way, and there's no stopping him. Do you know who he was? No. The Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. (laughs) 